Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. This is Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the US, and in this video tutorial, I'm sharing with you this great prism box featuring the Bloom Where You're Planted product suite. I love this box, a triangular treat box or gift box, prism box, whatever you wanna call it. I've shared a box similar to this before a few years ago, inspired by Amanda Charlesworth, and I decided to resize the measurements and make it more of an equilateral triangular side here. I've got a magnetic closure, and it's a pretty decent size on the inside for treats, gifts, etc. The measurements of the box are three inches wide at the bottom. It obviously tapers at the top, but it's two and five eighths inch tall, and it's three inches wide here at the front as well. So three, three by two and five eighths. These are products, again, from the Bloom Where You're Planted product suite, which I absolutely love. You can find these products on pages 80 and 81 of the annual catalog, and we're gonna be using the Plentiful Plants bundle and the Bloom Where You're Planted designer series paper. I love this box and the possibilities. It's easy to change up for different occasions, so let me show you how. We're gonna start with a piece of Just Jade cardstock that measures eight and a quarter by 11. And on the eight and a quarter inch side, we're gonna score this at two and five eighths from each side. So I'll just rotate it 180 and two and five eighths, or two and five eighths and five and five eighths. Then I'm gonna rotate it to the long side and we're gonna score this at three, six, and nine. And then I'm gonna make little tick marks with the ball tip of my stylus at four and a half. I'm gonna then flip the cardstock and four and a half again. And essentially what that's doing is the second section from the left, we are marking the halfway point between the score lines. Now bringing in the template here, you'll see these diagonal score lines. Those are diagonally scored up to those little tick marks we made at the four and a half inch mark. So using a ruler and the ball tip of my stylus, I'm gonna go ahead and score, I'm gonna show you on the template here, but score from the tick mark on the diagonal down to the next intersection of score lines. So bringing the paper in here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Like so. Next, we're gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines except for the diagonal score lines. Like so. So I'm gonna bring the template back in. We're gonna go ahead and do some cutting away. I'm gonna cut away these two rectangles in the lower left and right corners. And to do that, I'm just gonna grab a pair of paper snips. I've got my two inch wide section here at the top. And I'm gonna cut up the vertical score line and stop at that first horizontal score line. And then we're just gonna come in and remove this piece. Like so, repeat the same thing in the opposite corner. All right, so we've done those two corners. I'm gonna rotate this around. I'll also turn the template around here. And we're gonna cut up the vertical score line, but this time stopping at the second horizontal score line because we're gonna remove these two sections in the corner. Like so. Now these are pretty good sized scraps. You could use them for punches or other layers on projects. I'm gonna repeat the same thing in the other corner. Like so. So now we've got a piece that looks like this. The next thing I'm gonna do is fold and burnish on those diagonal score lines. This template will be posted to my blog. I'll have linked in the description. And now I just want to show you, we're going to dry fit this. So these triangular sides are going to fold up. The front is going to fold up and adhere to those flaps. And then this is going to be the back and then the front flap that's just going to fold over like so. But we're going to go ahead and adhere some designer series paper as well as add some magnets. I'm going to hide that under the designer series paper and kind of show you as I go. So I've got the Bloom Where You're Planted designer series paper and I have two pieces that measure two and three quarters by two and three quarters. I have another two pieces that measure two and three quarters by two and three eighths. This is a directional paper, so you wanna cut those in landscape. And then another piece that measures two and three quarters by one and three quarters. Again, you want this to be in landscape if you have a directional pattern. This piece, we're actually gonna round the lower two corners, and I'm also gonna round these two corners. This is that two inch flap, and I'm gonna do that using the detailed trio punch. 
All right, so we've got our rounded piece. Again, I rounded the bottom two corners with the directional paper. Now with these two pieces, we're gonna need to perform a little bit of surgery to turn them into triangles. These are actually gonna go on the sides of our box, but we need a triangular shape. So I'm gonna flip this over because this back side is lighter, and I wanna make a tick mark at one and three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna do that with a pencil on both pieces. Again, one and three eighths. Now with that tick mark, I'm gonna line up the tick mark in this lower corner in the cutting groove of my paper trimmer. And then we're just gonna cut right there on the angle. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite corner. So corner to the pencil mark. And then what we're left with is a piece that looks like this. We're gonna repeat the same thing on the other piece. Like so. All right, so let's start with the easy pieces first, and then we'll do the magnet pieces. So I'm gonna grab these triangular pieces. They're gonna fit right here in the triangles, and I'm gonna use multi-purpose liquid glue for that. All right, the other piece we're gonna glue down is one of the two and three quarter inch square pieces, and that's gonna go here. Consider this to be the top here, so we wanna make sure if it's directional that we're going top to bottom. All right, now's the fun part. We're gonna add the magnets. So the first magnet we want to do is on this front flap. I've got two magnets that I ordered from Total Element, and I'm gonna measure about an inch and a half down. This is where I want to put my magnets. I'm just gonna use my ruler to eyeball it. We're gonna cover this, so don't even worry about the pencil being seen. So I'm just making a little pencil mark there at one and a half. Gonna grab one of my magnets and pick up a glue dot with it. Use your take your pick tool to kind of make it easier to pick that up. And I'm gonna place that. I'm sort of eyeballing it just to make sure that it's around that one and a half inch mark, but also sort of centered in the panel. Now what we can do is glue this piece of designer series paper over top. Now again, this is going over the magnet. So we're gonna be a little bit more generous with our liquid glue. We just wanna make sure that our liquid glue holds everything into place. So I'm gonna just take my time here. And you just wanna make sure that that designer series paper glues down here all the way around that magnet. You can come in with your bone folder if you want to burnish there. It doesn't raise the designer series paper up very much, but it does hide that magnet, which is great. All right, now to figure out where to put the second magnet, here's what we're gonna do. I'm grabbing the second magnet, I'm gonna drop it onto the back side of this flap. That makes sure that we line up the proper positive and negative. I'm gonna grab a mini glue dot and we're gonna stick that right on top of that magnet, like so. Okay, now what we're gonna do is really, we just have to fold up this front flap and then sort of do a sandwich board here this is gonna let us know right where that magnet needs to go. So I'm just dry fitting it. You don't need to worry about the sides. We're just gonna line up this edge right up to that score line there, creating that triangular piece. And then we're gonna fold down and press. And what, what's gonna happen is that magnet will now be left behind right where we need it to be on that front panel. So now what we can do is come in with our last piece of designer series paper. This is the two and three quarter by two and three quarter. We're gonna glue that down here and hide that magnet. Just take your time to make sure that designer series paper is adhered all the way around that magnet. And if you don't like to work with magnets, you can just use Velcro dots for this. There we go. Now we can glue the rest of our box together now that that's ready to go. And the only thing we're gonna glue are these front two triangles. So these two triangles here, we're gonna glue those to the front flap. So I'm gonna take liquid glue and we'll do one triangle at a time. Just applying glue where we don't have designer series paper. And then I can line up this score line with this cut edge to glue those pieces together. Liquid glue is great for this because you can slide everything into place and get it nice and lined up there. Then we're just gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side here. Then you can sort of lay this flat. 
get your hand in there or your bone folder and just come in and burnish those pieces and make sure they're adhered down. We're gonna leave these flaps alone. I know they look a little bit different, but it's just the mechanism of the box to get this triangular or prism shaped box. Now we can fold the back and then the flap down and you'll hear that magnet click. I love that noise. Let's do it one more time. Perfect. And now it will hold itself together. How cool is this box? I love this box. All right, let's do a little bit of decorating. So here's the bundle that we're working with. I'm gonna start with the sentiment thank you from the Plentiful Plants bundle. And I'm gonna stamp that in evening evergreen onto a piece of basic white. And this piece measures three quarters by two and three quarters. And I'm actually going to adhere this sentiment down to this lower panel, sort of centering it. I've got the same amount of designer series paper peeking under the bottom and then between the flap and the sentiment. So I'll just take some liquid glue. There we go. And next I've cut a couple of scraps strategically from the bloom where you're planted designer series paper and using the dies, I'm going to go ahead and die cut those out. I love that we have options with this bundle. Not only can you die cut shapes from the designer series paper, but you can also stamp the same shapes in any colors that you want and die cut those as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and die cut these. I'll be right back. Now I've got those pieces cut out. How awesome is that? We're gonna adhere our pieces now. I'm just gonna grab this lighter green piece and put a little bit of adhesive on the bottom. I'm using the silicone mat here, so I don't make a mess with my glue. And we'll just layer those on top of each other. I'll add a little bit more glue here at the bottom. We'll place our terracotta pot right there. I'm gonna add a trio of dimensionals to the back here. And then I'm gonna pop that up on this prism gift box at a little bit of an angle here, like so. And then the final touch, I'll grab a large gilded gem. And there is our bloom where you're planted prism gift box. I absolutely love this. What a cool box to gift someone so easy to change up for different occasions. And I can't wait to see what you make with this tutorial. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Stampin' Up! products I used today, they'll be linked in the description. And I'll also include a link to my detailed blog post with all project measurements, details, and a picture of the template. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com where I post projects every weekday to inspire you. And if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive blog updates via email and you'll receive an email each time I publish a new post. You can shop with me anytime at thepaperpixie.com shop. And if you're interested in a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, the starter kit is the ultimate bundle and it's a great way to fill your wish list for less. You can purchase the starter kit at thepaperpixie.com slash join, and I'd love to welcome you to the Stampin' Up! family and my team of paper pixies. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you'd like complimentary copies of our current catalogs, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And if you give this project a try, I'd love to see what you made, so feel free to share it on social media with the hashtag paperpixie, and I'll be sure to check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.